All right, we're good now. Okay, I fixed it. Um, did I get your message? Yes, I got your message. Yep. Would the second part of that message be possible? Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm not. I'm not too picky about those kind of things. Or, um, cool, awesome. So, let's talk about what everybody else is doing uh, after that fun little interaction where you guys got some some money. So the chances we get a discounted room. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. I mean, maybe not. Like, the bartender probably doesn't care at all. Um, I don't know how gr- how how gracious he is. Um, but we'll see. Oh, we'll see. Maybe. But um, Hannibal and Morella, you guys are going shopping. Uh, it's totally normal for you guys to do that whole thing. Um, so Morella, so if you're if that's all you're doing, then you are just going to like head on back. Yeah. Um, so you'd probably arrive first at the uh, at the location, um, and probably see like a site a- akin to Vi and Arcadi maybe having some drinks and like a plate of food in front of them, uh, talking kind of uh, probably a little bit more upbeat than they were previously. Uh, Vi, I assume you told Arcadi uh, how much he gets, right? Uh, he has an ass, so he's not getting anything. <laughs> Arkady will expect Vi to pay for the stuff while they're in town. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair okay, enough. Okay, yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, and, uh, I suppose Morella joined some. And, uh, she looks over at Arkady, she's like, so I assume the rooms are in order? Uh, yes, we had to defuse situation on arrival, but everything seems quite calm now. I believe Vi has taken it under her generous spirit to provide for rooms. <laughs> I look at you and then say, it's taken care of. Yep. Morella uh, raises, I am just reasonably concerned she actually paid. And... I shrug. <laughs> Morella sighs as like this conversation happens, and she's like, "May I join you to eat?" Please. And she sits next to you, uh, Petrov, and like maybe she just takes like a small biscuit or something like that, something small uh, to just uh, pick away at. You have no appetite after uh, <laughs> exertions of last day. Sim- what? What? What has? Arkady's looking closer now here. Is something on your mind? No, I'm just not hungry. Yes, well, you you may find it is uh, difficult to maintain he gestures at your terrifying biceps. A <laughs> ladylike physique without food. She looks down and she's just like, I will manage. I normally do. Okay. So, Vi and Arcadi kind of like look at each other awkwardly. Yeah, I was going to say, we like an awkward like back and forth and then just keep, <laughs> keep yeah, no. adding what we're doing. Yeah, I think it's just, it just hard cuts to uh, to Hannibal. Um, so Hannibal, you are uh, you are going to get another, um, you're going to request another mask, right? Yeah. Because uh, right um, now you have bandages all over your face, right? Like that's... Yeah, you know, like, and I don't... I don't feel like looking like a mummy anymore. Yeah, you're going. You're you're full mummy right now. Yeah, so I'm calling up my bay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um. So so Dane appears as you tell him to come visible. He's like, "Greetings, Jackson. How may I be of assistance to you?" Sup, bitch. I need um, I need to contact my girl. He's like, "One moment. She does not wish to speak with you right now, Hannibal." Could you tell her that I need a new mask? I will put the request in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Go away. <laughs> he just he just oh, bows. Crap. He just bows and winks out of existence. Come back. He winks back into his existence. Right, like, he looks probably stop. a little bit confused, and he's like, uh, "Did you think of something that I can do for you?" Yeah, just be around. Make sure that nobody's coming up behind us. I will just keep always. Up. Keep up a search parameter. Just making sure that nobody 
sketchy comes around. I think he looks at you and he says, can you define sketchy? I think per the definition you that know, I know. The people we hang out with. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what if he says. If somebody looks like Chester it's, is coming up behind me, th- tell me. That's literally exactly what he says. He says, uh, so if I see any of your party members, you would like to be informed. Yes, or that, and also if somebody that looks like Chester or Vi starts coming up behind me, let me. He's like, he kind of like, for a moment, he's like, but that's part of your party that I just said. And then he's just like, very well, I will be on the lookout. And he vanishes, mm-hmm. like, invisible, but not disappearing out of existence. And he, you feel his distant presence somewhere in the vicinity looking out. God, I fucking hate that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much how that ends. Okay, cool. Uh, then we cut over to uh, the most important one of all. So Chester... Uh, would you tell Farron what, what you've dragged him into currently? Um, no. <laughs> Great. So, I, actually, no, I, I would, because, uh... I mean, if you're, gonna need a, if you're gonna get his help, he probably needs to know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, and he also knows spells. So, uh, yeah. So, as we're walking, and alone, Jackson, I take out please. these, uh... I want to be turkey. Yeah, mute yourself. Jesus. <laughs> uh, I take out these two books that are very clearly magical. And I say to you, uh, is there any way that you know what these are? You already can find that out. He's aware, but he's asking no. somebody different there, uh, Jackson. Because you were useless. <laughs> what the fuck? So, I mean, so you can identify that they're, they're grimoires, like, without a doubt. Yeah. If you're able to identify anything inside of them, will require a pretty high arcana roll. Yeah. Um, um, you also know that they would be useless for you. Oh, totally. Um, I mean, I may as well give it a shot, uh, but, yeah, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, I don't think you can I, identify uh, anything inside of them. Yeah. But you know I what will, they are, at least. I've, I mean, they, they're they obviously grimoires, magical spell tomes, but I've never been good at that kind of magic myself, see. Oh, all right, then. Well, I'm glad I have you anyway. We're, uh, <laughs> we need to find some uh, magic guys. Does your magic come identify. from your heart, Farron? I, it's <laughs> my emotions elapse through me. And give me mm. strength. I think that's actually a good I thought it was just your sick beats. Yeah, the sick beats. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess my next question is, Farron, have you ever had any dealings with any uh, schools of magic? Or orders? any of the eight orders of magic that exist in this world? Uh, no, because a lot of them are very lawful. And <laughs> yes, indeed, up. a lot of them are very lawful. <laughs> And growing up, that was certainly avoided at all costs, so... Yeah, like, probably, like, if you've ever had any dealings, you may not have even known known it, right? Um, yeah. Because you're not the only one in the circles that you run in that has magic. Um, sure. Sensibly, well, maybe a Grey Order representative you've met before, but you probably didn't know them. Um, mm. But uh, it is it is totally possible you've met others, but... You know that that would, like, it's either that option or, like, finding a street magician and seeing if he can use them. Or, um, you know, maybe using your contacts. Now, granted, you're a bit out of range for your contacts currently. Um, yeah. But you would know the signs, right, of what to look for. Uh, sure. Using those skills, you may be able to find somebody, but who knows what you get into when you go down that route. <laughs> right? Um, yes. Uh, well, Chester, then, what was your plan with these books? Well, as, uh, I want to find some wizards who might know more about it. <laughs> That's about as far as that plan got. I just kind of found them. So, you know. I, what... What bad things could happen from random grimoires? You know, nothing has ever gone wrong in the past, have they? 
Not that I know of. <laughs> well, you obviously don't listen to many folk tales then. Uh, not, not in particular, no. <laughs> Why has, well, has something bad happened that I should probably know about? <laughs> Are they demon summoners? I will probably regale a tale or two about uh, times gone past. Yeah. Um, so, actually, roll me a... Um, roll me... I wish there was, like, a... You know what, you know what D&D should have? D&D should have a class skill check. Where, as a bard, you could say, I'm going to roll a bard skill check to know about these things. Or, as a fighter, I'm going to roll a fighter skill check. That's something I may want to eventually look into. I, mean, um, I could do I mean, a history-based stuff charisma or something. Yeah, you? do me a history-based stuff charisma since it's your class skill. I, 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 sure. I like that plan. I mean, you can always just say, pick a stat and add proficiency because it's a class thing. Right, yeah. That's, yeah. Um... Well, a nine doesn't get you the uh, no. very many. Did you, did you do it? With... Oh, no, you did it with int, sir. You didn't choose charisma. Did I? Yeah. Roll that again. You're welcome. Yeah, that was a good Thank catch. You. That was a good catch. Sixteen will do it. Although it still hmm. says int. I don't know why it says int. I'm definitely changing it. Whatever, we'll just say you get a 16. That's fine. Um, you do know a story of a particularly bad grimoire. Um, so, you know... Uh, well, everybody knows who the great inventor of necromancy, Nagash, is. Um, it is said that Nagash made multiple tomes uh, called the Books of the Dead, right? And the Books of the Dead were scattered to the four winds by the people who defeated them and given to certain people to like keep protect and stuff like that um but it's said that um you know in the years past they've resurfaced and stuff like that and you know a story of a um surprisingly enough an orc tribe that discovered a book of the dead and they used it to summon a lot of um they used it actually uh to go to a barrow and summon the great heroes of of old and control them to attack the empire, um, and and yeah, like grimoires of power. It's just a story of like grimoires of power falling into the wrong hands. Um, there was a group of heroes who you know went out and fought them, and eventually you know killed the orc chieftain. Um, but then like it's it's one of those kind of stories that has a twist at the end where you know a member of the of the heroes like stole the book of the dead and. Um, you know, retreated into the mountains never to be seen again, and some say that he's still out there practicing his skills so that he can take revenge upon those that have wronged him, etc, etc. Yeah. But fun. Yeah, so you totally, like, regale him this tale. Um, and, like, you know, Farron, like, every, every folk tale is steeped in a little bit of history, right? Hmm. Or a little bit, a little bit of truth. Um, is is in every story that you tell, including mermaids. Including mermaids. Mermaids do exist. Um, they're pretty nasty too, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cool. <laughs> so yeah, he tells you basically like this so horror Farron's story. Just said death, death, death. Right. Yeah. He's tell he's told this horror story about grimoires to you, Chester. How do you react, Chester? Uh holds one of the books in his hand and uh, sort of moves it towards Fern and is like here you go you can uh, hold this if you would like hey I would rather not to be honest <laughs> oh oh come on it's it'll be fine I mean yeah. if you really want hey. these out of your sight one of the Proper orders may be more equipped to deal with them. Oh. Though you may never see them again if you truly wish to keep hold of it. Oh, oh, oh no, let's, uh, can, can we run? Do you, do you know where one is in the city? Um, 
Yeah, I don't think any of you been here, but you guys could each make investigation checks to see if you can find a proper order of magic that exists here. Okay. Um. Why not? Because I feel some bad's going to happen if we don't. Uh, you know, with these scary stories, I am now inspired to find yeah. this mm -hmm. order of magic. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, that was a good thing. You were <laughs> so inspired to find that order of magic. So I think that how this happens is like, you know, you guys are like, you guys are kind of in a rush and kind of like looking. And so like you see a shop that looks like it's got magic stuff and you, you run inside and you're like, Hey, can you buy magic books? And the guy's like, what are you talking about? You're like, okay, never mind. And then like you, you guys run into a library and you're like, Hey, do you want to buy some magic books? And they're like, we only keep regular books here. And you're like, okay, never mind. And you run out. Um, and like the, the night gets on and like, everybody's like closing and you guys are like freaking out a little bit. Cause now like the night is setting in and you know, you guys have not had the greatest couple of weeks and you have these you guys are a little worked up from Farron's story of these potential like books of the dead in your hands and uh <laughs> and Chester's like got them wrapped in cloth because he doesn't want to touch them anymore because he's afraid of like catching corruption or whatever um, they're in the backpack wrapped in cloth not touching anything else right I'm yeah, yeah, yeah holding everything um, else in my backpack and then I think uh you see the 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 two of you see like just based on pure luck um, you see there is a group of um, uh, a group of individuals from the Gold Order. Um, and the Gold Order is very distinctive in the fact that they deal with a lot more material things. They're very they're very much into like alchemy and um, like metallurgy and stuff like that. So they're kind of a, a bit more practical than some of the other more aloof uh, orders of magic. Also, uh, they're distinctly made up of a lot of dwarves and halflings. Um, with, with humans, you know, and elves kind of periodically scattered in there, but mostly dwarves and halflings. Like, that's that's almost that's almost it. Um, so it's a group of, there's, there's two dwarves and a human, um, and they're all, like, having a conversation, and they're wearing robes that have, like, the big, uh, it's like a smithing hammer and, a, like, a like a gold ore symbol behind it, and it's all, you know, in a circle and cool. Um, and, uh, and they're walking, and you guys, you recognize immediately as members of the Gold Order. Um, so I assume that you've stopped them? Yeah. Chester, uh, comes running from the darkness right in front of them, and is like, hey, hey guys, can, uh, can you help me out for a moment? Uh, one of the dwarves, they, like, they stop their conversation, and, uh, one of the dwarves, like, looks, looks up at you, and he says, Hi, laddie, what can I do for you? Uh, Chester puts down his backpack and kneels, and he he takes out one of the books that's wrapped in cloth, and he's like, uh, "I've I found these on a couple of Sigmar priests who turned into demons, and I want to get rid of them." Sure, yeah, now. I think the immediate onset the onset of what you just said is like they kind of like take a step back and they look at you, um, and uh, he looks. The two dwarves, like, kind of look at each other, and you can see, like, they're having, like, this this unspoken conversation of, like, uh, do we freak out? Well, but well. again, these are orders of magic, right? They don't necessarily think, like, uh, you know, they're not religious fanaticals, right? I'm not going to simply, like, immediately jump to the conclusion that clearly you are the demon summoner that killed these priests and took these books. Um, yeah. So you got lucky there that uh, these are not Sigmar fanatics. <laughs> Um, and I think that I think that uh, the dwarf that originally spoke, he looks at and he says, "That's quite the story, laddie. I, I'd I'd appreciate it if you could give us a little more information." Um, there's not much more information. They, uh, aye, but what do the books do? <laughs> that's that's why I need some help from you guys. Uh, uh, Chester just kind of drops the book on the floor. And uh, pulls out the second one, and he's like, "I just, I want to get rid of them." So it's you a, it's identification them? you'd be looking for. Sure, if you want to tell me, I I don't need to know. <laughs> I think Chester, yeah. Chester is visibly like shaking at this point. Farron, do you jump in here at any moment, or you just let Chester like freak out in uh, front of these guys? I mean. 
Farron probably lets out a chuckle, just seeing Chester just so physically scared. Uh, but yeah, probably after a while steps in. Ah yes, identification would be great. <laughs> well, that's something we can do. Uh, pick them up. Uh, they won't bite, boy. We'll bring them back to the, the guild hall. You can come with us. And, uh, like, they begin to trudge off, and, um, Farron, roll me a perception check. Okay. Uh, the human in the group looks far more interested than the two dwarves do. Um, the reasons behind that, though, who knows? But, like, when you notice significant, like, curiosity or, like, interest when... Like, the books were pulled out, and he, like, looked at him, and he's like, oh, yeah, mm, mm, mm. he did that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but it didn't seem, like, overtly, like, it wasn't an overtly bad feeling, right? It was, like, genuine, okay. like, interest and curiosity, where the dwarves are kind of, like, hand wave, like, ah, yeah, sure, magic books, sure, come with us, we'll get them identified for you, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's that not going to pick them up and then next... start casting the spells out of them and kill you guys, okay? <laughs> that was kind of my train of thought God, when... It's like you guys are so trained to think everybody is evil. Well, <laughs> blue eyes, that's all I'm going to say. Oh, he's totally got blue eyes, obviously. You fucker! <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't know what color eyes he has. They're probably brown. <laughs> You just, you just decided blue. I don't think you can take that back now. Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's canon. They're totally blue eyes and they glow a little bit in the night. Mm. Brilliant, you know. <laughs> cool. So it's it's getting on. Like the the night is progressing on, and you guys are led by these dwarves back to uh, the guild hall, which is basically just like an in-sized building that has like rooms and like a few tables. It doesn't have like a bar or anything like that. Um, but it's clearly got like a kitchen in the back though, and like it's kind of your general larger building in the in the town. Um, and probably the reason why you guys, and I think you both realize you've run past this place like three or four times a day, trying to find somebody to get these damn books off your hands. But the sign that's outside is like so faded, like the paint is so faded that like you can't even tell what it is anymore. Um, hmm. so you guys have just bypassed it just like a hundred times. Um, so you guys are escorted into the building and, you know, you're given like kind of cushy seats in like the waiting area and there's a few other dwarves and a few halflings and like one or two other humans that are like kind of progressing or like they're having drinks or whatever, or eating their food and um, generally it's kind of like a nice like social like homey atmosphere in here, which I don't know, may or may not relax you, you guys can decide whether or not it does. Uh, and then eventually, I think that you guys are you guys are said uh, you know someone will be with you in a second. Um, and the human that that met you, he comes up and he's like, uh, "I am very interested in, in those books that you have, fine sirs. May I, pray tell, take a look at them?" Ch uh, Chester's still on the ground, and he looks up, and he hears the the connotation of his voice. He looks at the dwarf. And back at the human, and he's like, he can't have them. No. Uh, you guys, uh, maybe you missed it, Chester, but you're, like, back at the guild hall now. Guild hall, right. Yeah. Still on the ground. Yeah, sure, Good sure. Book. So, and he's the only one there, so you say, uh, no, I'd prefer somebody else looked at him. And he's like, he's like, uh, all right, I was, I was under the impression that you guys needed some assistance, but uh, very well, uh, we'll wait for the masters to show up. Yeah. <laughs> he gives you like kind of a kind of a, a low bow and turns and just walks away. Just to, I think, just to put it out of our minds, I'll may as well throw this out. And I can't tell at all. Yeah, no. He so seems he, like he seems like he was you know maybe a little bit offended, but you know he's kind of hard to read a little bit. Chester's gonna do the same. Never mind. And you get about the same. Like, it's not... He doesn't seem to be, you know, overtly like, oh, I'm gonna get you, you ruined my evil plots and plans. Um, <laughs> not that That's not something you pick up at all. Uh, but you probably also don't pick up, like, the, you know, maybe a little bit of... His pride maybe hurt a little bit, or, like, you know, he's confused or whatever. 
It's hard for you guys to read them. Jester still doesn't like how he talks about the books. Mostly because of your own ineptness, not because that he is generally a hard person to read. <laughs> yeah. Just, just to be fair. Yeah. Um, but after a few moments, the uh, clearly there's like a there's like a, a dwarf um, and a halfling that come down, uh, and the dwarf is dressed differently from like the rest of the gold order people. Uh, he's got robes that are like kind of they're they're trimmed in gold, like actual you can see like gold flakes uh, inside of the cloth, which is like in this world means you have literally all of the money that existed. Um, like that's that's a sign of like very high nobility or very highly um, profitable individuals like to have your clothing laced in gold is is a very big sign um, the rest of it is like pure white uh, with a little bit of he's wearing like a red under tunic um, that kind of you know you can see through the the robes as he moves around and the the halfling comes over and it's a it's a girl and she is not dressed like a spellcaster or anything like that at all she doesn't have robes on um, she's got leather boots and like these darker gray leather pants uh, and she's wearing like this uh, this leather kind of um, well, it's probably not leather actually. It's probably like a like a cloth tunic um, with you know like a big collar on it. It's kind of popped up a little bit. Um, and she's got two short swords on her side, and she's got a bow strung kind of across her back. Um, and for those of you that would notice a thing like this, um, she's she's a good looking halfling. Like she's quite gorgeous as far as halflings are concerned, if that's something that you are, uh, you are interested in. She rolled like a, you know, like an 18 on her, on her hotness roll. Um, damn. Yeah. So, you know, if, if that's something you pick up on Farron, you know, beauty of all types. So you probably definitely pick up on the fact that she is a good looking cool. halfling. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they, those two approach you. Um, and the dwarf says, uh, greetings. I am Galvec. I hear that you have some goods you need identified. Uh, yeah, we we do. It's these two books here on the ground. He um he approaches and he he goes to like pick them up. He like he reaches down and then like has a moment of like looking at you. You're like you're not gonna freak out if I touch these, right? And then I assume that you let him pick them up and he um he picks it up and he doesn't open it. He kind of holds it and you can see his fingers like kind of tracing the outside of the book. Um. And he flips it over to the back cover, and he traces, like, the the intricate kind of designs. Um, <coughs> and he, he, without having to, like, open it up or anything, he just hands it, like, behind him and, like, bends down to reach the other one. And you see that the halfling, um, she grabs it, and uh, she, like, licks her thumb and, like, flips it open and begins, like, flipping the pages. Um, and her eyes are, like, moving, like, really rapidly. Like, she's reading, like, things, like, really, really fast and, like, absorbing information. Um... And she flicks through the pages, like, almost at a, at a more rapid rate than I think you could identify. Um, and uh, she closes the book. Um, and by that time, he's, like, traced the outside of the other one and hands it back and traces the other one. Um, and she, she sets that one down on, like, the coffee table. And she, you know, flips that one open and does the same thing and sets that one down on the coffee table. Um, and the while, they're having this kind of conversation between the two of them. Uh, but it's one of those things where, like people are talking about something that you know nothing about um so you can only hear like certain things like in the conversation right like it's it's not that they're speaking a different language but it's almost like they're speaking a different language right mm. um and fair and like you see like you probably hear like some words that perhaps you've heard before when when people are talking about magic like different levels or like different circles of magic or different elements that things are used with and um chester is probably mostly rubbish to you uh what they're talking about completely yeah and i think that um w once they're done kind of looking through the two um they look at each other and they the the halfling kind of looks at you and she says uh she's like well this is interesting where did you find these uh, uh they <laughs> they came <dead>. off <laughs> they they came off uh, a couple of sigmar priests who were turned into demons I think I think she just she just nods and she says yes, but I asked where. That is very important uh, for our investigation. She didn't blink at all at that. Nope, <laughs> not even a little bit. Wow, this girl is hardcore. Uh, I found the books on like on their bodies, didn't I? Uh, yeah, they're ruined, like chest exploded bodies. Yeah. Okay. 
a uh, la Alien. That, that's exactly what I what I tell her. I tell her uh, uh, I found it on the bodies of the two priests, and their chests were yeah exploded out. So I think that I think that's I, just, we were in none. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's that's what she she like. She's like, well, you're useless. Maybe you where exactly were you when you found these? And you say, no. And she says, yes, thank you. That's the answer I was looking for. Your friend here is not very helpful at all. You should probably look into that matter. I, he's been a bit shaken as of late. Yes, well, perhaps a uh, nice glass of, of tea will settle him down. And she, like, she turns around, she, like, snaps her fingers, and somebody, like, comes, uh, comes running over with some tea, and she's like, here, take these. We'll need to look a little bit further, but... Perhaps if you want to stay here for the night or go meet up with any other friends that you may have, they can totally join you. Uh, we have plenty of rooms. Uh, uh, I what do you thank want to you. Share? That would be okay. Very that's much fantastic. I'm going to take these now, and she grabs the books and trundles off. Um, Chester <laughs> lets out this really deep sigh, and he's like, "Oh, thank God." Yeah, and like she left the dwarf guy that had like the rich fancy clothes on, and he just, he just, you see him just, ha, 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 ha. Uh, yes, yes, that sounds about right. But yes, if you wish to stay here for the night or go meet up with your friends, I'm sure that, I'm sure that she will have them identified by the morning for you. She is a quick study, and he, he gives you like a like a nod, and he turns to to depart. All right, well, that's all we can do for now then, Chester. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go meet up with them or stay here? I did. Probably worthy, otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Basically, anytime you guys are not all six together, every like somebody needs to be worried. <laughs> at yeah. any point in time. Hey, just uh, ten minutes ago, we are in, in possession of two grimoires that could have destroyed the world, for all we know. You're right. So... Back it is. Back it is. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys, you guys quickly, do you, do you take the, do you drink the tea before you leave, or do you just leave it sitting oh, there? Oh, uh, the cup's coming with me. <laughs> okay, yeah, you take the cup, that's fine. Um, so, uh, you, you head off, uh, and out the doors and over to the, I assume you had set up in the, in the beginning that you were, guys were going to the Simple River Inn. So you arrive, and the other four individuals are probably there, fat on food and drinking beer or ale or wine whatever their tastes uh may be um maybe there's like a like a you know a couple of drunk drunkards at the the fireplace like singing and people are you know throwing stuff at them or whatever it's a general in atmosphere there's a couple locals bunch of traders it's fairly busy actually i think you guys are used to you guys got kind of used to the uh the the galleon and the knoll that was a little bit empty all the time because it's got so much competition this inn, though, is, like, a little bit crowded, almost. Um, there's... It's basically standing room only. There may be, like, one or two couple of, like, chairs available. But that's only because people are, like, up getting drinks or up, like, just wandering around. Um, so the din in here is... The commotion is quite loud. There's a cacophony of voices and sounds that are... That are going through. But it's generally, like, a kind of nice, upbeat atmosphere. So you guys enter. And I assume you head over to the table where everybody else is. Yep. Okay. So, so everybody has been has coalesced again in the same location. Uh, none of you summoned any demons. None of you got attacked by any babies or children. Um, you were just only oh, a successful day. Mildly insulted by a uh, a strange halfling woman. Um, so, what is, where does the conversation take us when you when you guys arrive back at your at the location? Well, better yet, here's a question. What are the four of you talking about when Chester and Farron return? I think that as, like, how far away are we from the, uh, pretty much where we're going with escape and all? Like, how many days journey out? Um, so you're about three days journey from, uh, Averheim, which is the capital. And then from Averheim, it's probably about another week to, uh, Sarafel. And then from Sarafel, um, you have to go kind of on foot um, but it's only a few days' journey on foot to the Mulberg Ruins, where you guys' intended destination is. So, within two weeks, you guys should be at your location. In that case, I might be giving them a rundown about how Skaven work, in case they didn't know. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. So you're you're educating them on uh, on this the practices of Skaven and stuff. Yeah, just in case. Okay. Yeah, Morella seems uh, almost uninterested as you were explaining this. Uh, I think at one point while you're diatribing about the Skaven, um, I think Vi would lean over to Morella and quietly ask, my lady, how is your back healing? Just fine. Why do you ask? No reason. It's just worried about you, you know, making sure that you're healthy. Do I not seem fine to you? You do not seem fine to me, but I guess that's been a while now, so I'm not really quite sure why I'm surprised. <coughs> she just nods and continues, like, uh, slowly picking at food and uh, staying quiet. Okay. So, you don't care to share, then? And then Vi's just like, whatever, and kind of <laughs> leans back in her chair and only half listens to Hannibal. Sure. Uh, Hannibal, you can have your spell back, Jesus. Um... I want to roll hit dice. Okay, you can roll that too. Fine. You're going to get a long rest. I'm not going to try and kill you before you go to sleep, okay? Stop asking about your damn short rests. Fuck. I asked once. Good boy. All right, cool. Awesome. Um, so, uh, you walk into Hannibal, like, probably saying, and that's how they make rat ogres, and, like, you guys arrive at the, uh, um, at the inn. So do you guys tell them what you did? Like, is there any conversation that happens? Like, you know, Petrov or Vi or any of the four that were there, do you like, hey, where have you guys been? I think immediately I'd be like, oh, thank God you're back because I'm so sick of listening to anything about Skaven and then just probably ask, um... And this is your meeting Yeah, I'd be like, so Chester, darling, where have you been? I'm sure it's far more interesting than what we're doing here. Not particularly, just, uh, we, we need to go back to the gold order before we leave, but for like five, five minutes, we're, it, yeah, it's nothing. We've, we've been doing nothing. Yeah. I, it's actually pretty good, there's no dead clergymen, there's no demons, I no, we're having a pretty good day. Interestingly specific things to be proud of. Chester looks at Morella it? and he's like, I didn't kill anyone, so we're good. Anyone. That you know of. <laughs> we go in the morning, and that entire half of the city is just in blazes. <laughs> like it's, molten, it's just molten slag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, uh, when you look at her, Chester, she doesn't like look at you, and she seems very uninterested in what you guys are saying. Cool. Is there something on your mind? Not at all. I'm just tired. Okay, cool. So the conversation trails off and maybe picks up again. Maybe you play a few bars, uh, Farron, and the rest of you go to sleep. Um, and you awake in the morn. Um, all of you can roll your hit dice, get your, uh, get sh half your hit dice rounded up. So for those of you at level seven, uh, you get, or half your hit dice rounded down, sorry. Uh, you get three back, and then for the rest of you, you get four back. Debating whether I want to roll for HP or not. All oh, right, yeah, you, you leveled and you came in late, so we didn't do the whole leveling thing for you. Um, don't, I am sorry. don't be pussy. Yeah, so figure that out. Uh, Chester rolled and got max, so... And oh, and I rolled, rolled and, and I got, got zero. <laughs> <laughs> technically. Yeah. Technically speaking. I will roll. Yeah, roll that hit dice to see how much it is. Hey, Damn. nice. Nice. Nice, 11 more health for Morella. That's good. That's good. Um, so that's a great place to take a break, perhaps? Uh, like, yeah. like, like, little 10 minute break. Everybody can go grab a drink. Uh, we'll be back at like 8, 8 13 EST. So, in 10 minutes. That looked delicious. All right. All right. Cool. Be right back, guys.
Yep. Yeah, face. and then we're gonna see how you guys die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, stream. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh wait, hold on. <laughs>